All right, episode uh, number two here. This is the uh, U.S. Greco-Roman uh, Leadership and Character Development Show, episode two. I've got uh, Rick and his friend and uh, what, what do you call it? Mission partner, uh, space shuttle buddy. Uh, Team teammate. Teammate. Yeah. Teammate. That's Before. what we call him in wrestling. So yeah. that, that's perfect. <laughs> and this is Reinhold Povolitis. And uh, Reinhold was a NCAA athlete. He was a baseball player for uh, Arizona State. And he's uh, he's an engineer. He's a rocket ship engineer. Well, you can tell us a little more, Reinhold. Yeah, I work on uh, operations on the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter camera uh, mission. So we, uh, we we study the moon surface. I'm always targeting images on the moon and uh, collecting all the data, making sure everything processes correctly, and then doing the science behind that. Okay, this is really cool. I got there it is. <laughs> the Hero 14 mission. I got. I should just wear it, right? That is I'll, I'll leave it on there. And okay, so uh, yeah, Rick sent me this. It's pretty cool. I'm, uh, I feel like I I'm, I was a part of it. And and I guess you guys just got back from a distillery. You guys were over there, uh, and for some odd reason, this distillery had uh, Supol's Bulgarian bags in there. They did. It's uh, yeah. What more could you want for a distillery than to have Supol's Bulgarian bags back there to, to get after it with? And so you That's guys were doing some, some uh, spins and some arm throws and maybe a couple swing squats. Get, get a little oh, yeah. training in. As soon as Rick got a hold of it, man, he was all over. He was going all over, all over the place. Well, my my uh, my friend uh, Jackson Taylor has a song on Whiskey Session. So next time you're over at the distillery – you're gonna to have to put that on real loud and Jackson Taylor whiskey sessions. It's I I mean I I can't think of a better song when you're at a distillery. We'll have to uh, make sure that we definitely get that done over at Jay Riley's. That was the distillery's Jay Riley's great guys, uh, veterans, and uh, great great local business of support. So our second mm -hmm. second episode here, I've already got a a, a guest. I'm excited about this and uh, another really smart guy and he's an engineer and he takes pictures of the moon and uh, I mean all kinds of cool stuff but when we were talking about teammate uh, teammates and teamwork and uh, this is about leadership development and being a good teammate I'm, I'm constantly trying to develop in my athletes a, an attitude where they want to they want to get better to to help their teammates get better as well they want to you know one of the the hardest things I think for for younger athletes these days is calling each calling their friends out on their bullshit like when, when somebody's fucking up they're they're not willing they don't have the courage they don't have the strength they don't have the skills to say hey get it right fix this you're you're, you're messing up you're doing something wrong what would you what would you guys say in, in in a spaceship like when things are going wrong I mean you have to hold one another accountable don't you yeah I mean I think that's that's a really good point and I know I've been asked that type of question a couple times by people about kind of things I learned about being in the mission. And one of the things that was really important was teamwork. And without it, you can't really have a success because there's a hundred different ways that the mission can go wrong if the team's not working together. And, and that our mission in particular was to study uh, how teams work in isolated, confined, or extreme environments when you can't escape out um, because you're in outer space, for example, or under the sea and in, in underwater or something. And I think one of the things I learned, at least, and maybe Reinhold, um, you know, can share his experiences maybe too, but I really got to dial into the idea that it's really important to hold teammates accountable, but I, I think that gets sometimes mistaken by people in regular situations, meaning, you know, in it, what we couldn't do that I don't think would have been effective would be getting up in someone's face and getting up in their grill like you would imagine in a movie or something yeah. But you really have to be a caring teammate, a loving teammate, and realize that you're really in this together for a very long-term period, and you have to get along even after this period. So one of the things that I kind of learned was the importance of not kicking that can down the road that I think is also very common in everyday life, right? Um, it's easy to push things away and not confront things and avoid those kind of anxious situations. But you know, like Matt was saying, you really do need to sort – things out. And we would have scheduled sessions where we would talk and debrief at the end of every day. And, and I think having that comfortability and trust in your teammates that they can count on you to hold each other accountable by um, 
a supportive way that they know that you're not coming after them or there's not a personal problem. I think that's a good yeah. Get a little yeah, closer I, to the mic, Reinhold. Oh, sorry. So what Rick is getting at is, uh, is exactly right. And I think he was kind of exceptional at this during the mission was you have to approach it, not necessarily get in someone's face or something, but you have to be delicate enough um, about it so that the person doesn't feel like it's an attack. So, you, you know, when we were in mission, there's sleep deprivation, there's all these raw emotions that come out and, and people can react differently than they might if they were well rested and, and their normal self. And you have to be cognizant of that. And I think, you know, Rick did a great job in mission. We had, we had a few occasions where there's some discrepancy in the team and, and some, some challenges to overcome. And, and Rick would phrase his arguments or what, whatnot in, in a way that got a response that was beneficial to everyone, if that makes sense. So he, uh, and I think that's important. So you, you got to be aware of this situation and then you go after it and then, and, and confront someone in, in a good, reasonable way, delicately. Well, there, there's, I think right there's, there's hit, definitely a fine line between being loving and being assertive, isn't there? I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a fine balance. But think about the situation. I mean, we're, we're dealing with the same kind of environment. It's a high stress, high stakes. I mean, we got, we got guys getting ready for world championships, Olympic games. You know, even if it's not uh, an Olympic Games or, or World Championships, it could be a Pan Ams or a national title or some stressful event. But at the same time, you're looking at these guys, and some of these guys, I think, in their mind go, um, well, this is an individual sport. I need to worry about me. I need to focus on me. And I'm not going to worry about him. He might be screwing up, but you know what? He, he needs to take care of himself. I mean, how does how do those dynamics work? Because... In a in a shuttle, you guys have to be a team, but but I I kind of feel like if if we were better teammates, we could have more success as well. Yeah, I mean I think that that's a really important part. And one thing I actually really learned a lot um, from the examples Reinhold set and Shelly set and Paul set. I feel like I learned so much from you guys as teammates about I think exactly what you're dialing into that you're not really an individual in fact if you want the team to succeed and if you want to succeed even as an individual the best strategy i kind of really saw them set the best example for was put the team first the the team matters more than you and, and kind of what i picked up from that was that you know if if we can make that the priority um in our minds then we work together and if you know we talk about wrestling here as an example right Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, Reinhold mentioned that we were on a sleep deprivation experiment. So we were chronically sleep de deprived and that, that changes you, right? And that's not so different from wrestling. You're chronically cutting weight. You're in, you're in a, sometimes not so great of a mood yeah. and it rubs off on your teammates. Sometimes if you can't culture that good team vibe, that community where you can rely on each other and, and not, not be frustrated and reinhold was was awesome at we kept we had such a good it was like summer camp we cultivated always having fun always having a way to have a good time and i think having that attitude that no matter what's going on no matter what stressors coming up no matter how much weight you're cutting how much not hot water you might have out at a tournament in baku mm -hmm. or what have you that i think we kind of tried to take the attitude of looking at everything as an opportunity rather than an obligation so that even the, the challenges that came up, it wasn't, oh, we have to do this or, oh, I have to go do this. It was really looking at it as an opportunity instead. And um, I think that helped us to, to work through the challenges that the mission was intended to create for us and to see how that works. Because you can't be an individual in those situations. When you're an individual, it tends to be that I think that those are the times when you've allowed the weight cut to get to you the sleep debt to mm -hmm. get to you because when you're on your game, you know, you're putting the rest of the team first and you're you, thinking you of those. Teams. And I don't know, that's just kind of, yeah. And you know, I'd say it's kind of like wrestling. I, I never wrestled, but as an individual kind of sport, you know, for me personally, I, I, I got a lot of energy from building other people up, you know, even as an individual, I get a lot of energy from building other people up. And I think that that kind of, spreads around a team a lot 
you know, if you got a, a group of guys that will just do what they have to, to, to bring everyone to the, to the elite top level as high as they can, that gives a lot of people energy. And, and in the mission, I, I noticed that, you know, you, you kind of do individual tasks, but at the same time, you're always thinking, how can I build this other person up a little bit just to make them a little bit better somehow? Well, give, yeah, give me an example. I mean, that's that sounds really import, uh, important. I I would like to see some of our athletes making a, a real effort and, you know, consciously trying to do that. And I mean, leading on purpose, with purpose. For me, uh, you know, when we were in mission, there'd be times where, you know, Rick or, or Shelly or, or Paul, the other crewmates, you could see that they weren't quite at, at their peak. Like, it, maybe in that one little moment, they weren't quite at their peak. And in being aware of that, you could go in and, and you only have to say a little thing or, or make a little gesture. And then you, you just bring them up just a tiny bit. And that gets them through the next 10 minutes, the next hour, something like that. So for, for us, you know, Thursday or Friday nights, after all the sleep, uh, it might be something where Luke might see me and I'd, I'd be down a little bit and he'd be like, Hey man, and he'd just say, he'd say he'd say something that would make me laugh or something or, or say like hey man this is this is awesome you're doing awesome and that would bring me up just enough to to up my game and then I'd be ready for the next 24 48 hours so I think you know your guys wrestling you know you might be tired you might be at your limit and someone could just say hey like you're doing freaking freaking awesome work right now like just put in a little bit more. That's all it takes, and then the whole team brings brings it up a notch. And I would say too, Matt. I think Rhino had great examples, and one thing that really stood out to me from the mission is how attuned he was to that from even training. So before we go in mission, we're training, and I remember being impressed with him right from the get go because he he seemed to understand that. And we would have conversations where we were first getting to know each other, and it actually kind of was based on athletics. He's like, yeah, he's like, you know, he was excited. And, and I think we were too, once we both saw that we were athletes, that it was like, I kind of miss being a part of a team and, and that we were in, say, NCA or whatever, where you have that camaraderie. And I think to your question, and Reinhold always says stuff so much better than I do, but I'm going I'm to try. But, you know, give an example of something like that. I think that I kind of drew from athletics and it seemed like he did too, where maybe something was going – you know, you can see somebody struggling, and I think if you, th- it became evident to me that if I was struggling with something, you could tell that they were thinking of me, for example, um, and, and just come up with something to say, not like, hey, you did a great job on that, because maybe I know I didn't do a good job. They'd say a joke, something completely unrelated that I think kind of came from sports where yeah. you know you can mess around with somebody, <laughs> lighten the mood, make them feel okay, let them know you still got their back, and uh, we just had fun. So it was always kind of thinking of someone else, maybe not always in an operational sense. Um, so certainly in certain operations, you're on a spacewalk uh, simulation or something, you're thinking um, on a technical level, he's thinking, uh, where does he, so he, w- he would command me of where I need to go based on vectors sort of around this asteroid. And he'd be thinking ahead three steps of where I need to go. But in a, in a teamwork sense, you know, hanging around when somebody's having a bad day or sleep debt or undercutting weight, you know, sort of kind of miserable, thinking ahead like, hey, what's something funny that this guy's going to think is funny <laughs> five minutes from now? And he would set up something where I'd find something around the corner and it was some gag or a joke, something to keep the team going. Well, and vice versa, you know, like I'd, I'd make mistakes directing him and I would I would feel this enormous guilt like, oh, I'm screwing this up. Like, you know, what do I do? Hey, what is he thinking? He's on the other side. Like, he's a pilot. Like, he, you know, he expects this professional like you know high quality interaction and and i'm not providing it and i'm making mistakes and it would get quiet for a minute and then on the comms he'd say hey man you're still my hero <laughs> like, it's true he is you know, i'd be like that's all it took like he, he's full full crap on that but but it, that's all it took to be like all right like he's still in the game with me like we're, we're still in this together we're he's still positive about this like now i can clear my head and just focus on it and then all it took was that little bit of uh of comment on the relief i mean look you can't get through something whether it's a a tournament somewhere in azerbaijan or a, <laughs> uh, a mission out to an asteroid um without caring for your teammates right 
And, you know, one of the, you can't just care for your teammates on the mat, right? Like, you, that's not going to get it done. Like, you can't just care for them when they're wrestling. You got to care for them when they're training, when they're cutting weight. But, like, even that stuff, right? Like, there's going to be parts of the trip, whether it's your kind of trip out to a remote area of Tajikistan or our kind of trip, <laughs> get locked up pretending to go somewhere in space. You got to... You got to care for them outside of the the actual content of the operation that you're doing. Like caring about like what's going to make this guy have fun because I realize none of us are happy right now because we're either cutting weight or we're haven't slept in God knows yeah, how long. Yeah. But what's going to be something that makes this fun and makes the other teammates going to have enjoy being around each other when maybe maybe the situation is not always the most pleasant because you know that's that's life that's you got to get through those things. So I think that's, I don't know. No, I think, I think it's great. I mean, I, I've got a couple more questions. I I've written a couple notes. I mean, we were going to discuss something in this book tonight, which I don't think we're going to get to, but this is a, uh, this is a book we use. Uh, it is, I'm going to read it cause I don't know if you can see it. It's just championship formula uh, by Dr. Jack Stark. And Dr. Stark was my sports psychologist. Uh, I met him when I was at the university of Nebraska. He helped Tom Osborne, win three national titles and he's now he works for uh for nascar and i mean the guy's a, a, an incredible person and he, he has an ac- an acronym he uses for character and the first thing on the acronym the the letter c is caring and and i mean it just keeps coming back to me we talk about you know character development and and leadership on this show well first the first thing we gotta we gotta discuss character and what what we talk about and when I say we, Jack, and, and something I've shared with the team is 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 using this acronym for, for character. And it's caring, it's honest and humble is is the second one. So so I'm hearing you're being honest with one another. You're you're calling each other out, but you're doing it from a caring from a caring position. You're being humble about it because you're screwing up and Rick's Rick's screwing up and we're both we're 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 making mistakes because we're just trying to figure this is that's life. You know, you got ebb, you got flow. And sometimes you're doing great and you're on top of your game. Sometimes you're making mistakes. So you got to be humble about that and, and humorous, humorous. So the three, the three things for H that, that we have is honest, humble, humorous. The first one was character, which is, which is caring is a C. The next one is attitude, uh, resilience, resiliency, uh, analytical. Now these are all things when I, when I think about the team that, that was doing the hero mission 14 uh, you guys all have these things. You were caring. I'm, I'm hearing this right now. You were honest. You were humble. You were humorous. You had a great attitude. You were resilient. You were analytical. And then you communicated. I'm, I'm hearing communication, courage. Now, I mean, that, that's, that applies. I mean, because you're, you don't know where you're going. You don't, and you're having the courage to call somebody out on their bullshit and, and understanding that they're going to accept it and they're going to, they're going to believe it. The the last thing the last ones are are teach, and uh, energy and rules to live by, and so uh, I, I mean I just want to continue down this this thing. We're gonna we're gonna get into these other topics later. We're gonna talk about this book more. I want to just hear more about this mission, and how those kind of things applied. And my first question is though, was there a, a designated leader? Was somebody named you're the leader of this mission? And did people that weren't assigned leadership roles take on leadership roles? Let's let, let me hear about that. Yeah, we had a commander of the mission, uh, <clears throat> Paul Hogan. Did a fantastic job. Really wonderful leader. Uh, he's a flight engineer for the T thirty eight jet at NASA, and he he's now an engineer on the human factor side with Para. Um, absolutely incredible. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and really a fantastic leader. I learned a lot from him about being a leader. He his patience, his kindness. And really, there were times when maybe we were struggling with something um, that some of the tasks that we were doing that we were testing out. So we were kind of like test pilots of psychology systems and different um, different systems that were going to be used in future spacecrafts. And so part of testing things out is that sometimes things don't work. And I remember one time I got really frustrated by something and maybe I was sleep deprived or I was, you know, cranky about something. And I was really about ready to, you know, speak my mind about whatever it was that didn't go well on that task. And I remember Paul said something really very patient and kind. And he said, you know, somebody probably worked really, really hard on this for a really long time. This was their project in graduate school or 
or something. And he's like, wow, you know, this, this really didn't work out well. <laughs> like, Somebody probably spent a lot of time on this. And it really talked me off the ledge and made me realize those, those traits, right. To be caring about our teammates, not just the four people on our team, you know, and, and presumably, obviously you guys know this at USA wrestling and things like that. A team is so much bigger than the, the, the seven guys in the lineup or the 14 guys back. We're, we're up to There's 10 a- weights now. We got 10. But ten. We, go back right, to, right. we go back to six for the Olympics. But, you know, right. there's when you got 10 weights, there's 30 national team guys. There's guys that are just outside of national teams. There's cadets. There's juniors. You're absolutely right. I mean, I, I'm, I hope this, this show is reaching the team as a whole. Yeah. And so it got me to be reminded. I learned from his leadership that, you know, to, to broaden my perspective of that, of our team, because there's a huge support team and we're just – an insignificant little small tip of a very large iceberg of people. And it was, I mean, it was an honor to be a part of that for a period of time, but it's, th- those are the team, those are the people who are really driving this forward. And I think that that being reminded to take that humility of where we stand in that kind of pecking order, if we're lucky enough to represent USA in an Olympic game or something like that. We're representing a much larger team, or, or you know, if, if you're if you guys are doing that, of people who've built and created those opportunities, and I think we felt that. Um, yeah. I know that Paul really helped to underscore that for us, and and that was great. And, and even seeing Reinhold's leadership on things, where, you know, he, I think you were really really good at keeping a steady demeanor of of not. I guess I would say not um, not letting things get to you. It was really impressive, and I learn. I'm always learning from you about that, and I think that that was great. And having that humility, Matt, you asked about accountability. Um, we, I think, we built the trust with our team to to have the humility to first offer people, like maybe in the be- in the middle of the day, or we're struggling with something. We said, "Hey, I'm struggling with something. I'm not doing well. I'm screwing this up today," yeah. so that we could ask for help. You got to be able to do that. And I think that helps foster that. And it shifts, you know, like, you know, Paul is our, what was our designated leader and he, he filled that role perfectly in my sense, in my opinion. Uh, but, you know, he had his, his points too, where, you know, he wasn't at the top of, of his game and, and other people had to kind of rise. And, and you know, there, there were times when, when Rick would become kind of the leader and then say, this is how, what we need to do. This is how we need to, to, to react. This is how, we, you know, how we need to handle the situation. And, and at different times, you could have different people rise to the occasion. And it, it doesn't necessarily always have to be the designated leader from the get-go um, the whole way through. And, and you know, Rick handled that extremely well in the, in the times that it came up. And, and it would always fall back on Paul eventually. And then he filled his, the, the role perfectly. Uh, but you don't always have to, to look to one single person to be your leader the whole way through, I guess is the point. is Someone will rise to the occasion when, when it's needed, and, and that's important as well. Well, I think, I think the other thing that Reinhold really reminded me of, and I think you, you really hit the nail on that head, is that there's different kinds of leadership at different times. And I think one of the things that was acknowledged is we each bring different skills and different abilities right and so knowing when to back off when you're out of your element is really important but knowing that you can that somebody else can pick that up so you know there's different people can lead on different things in different capacities and those strengths and weaknesses you know work together and i mean there were things that shelly was able to lead us with in a fa- in fantastic ways oh, yeah. that w- would have been completely over our heads yeah, and we yeah, were just yeah. we would have not even acknowledged it, and she brought it to our attention. And said, "Hey, we should be doing this, this, and this." And we're like, okay, it puts yeah. us in check in a way, right? I mean, well, but you're everybody already- has certain strengths, certain weaknesses. I, I think one of the, the one of the areas we we might need to talk about is is understanding your strengths, understanding your weaknesses, because that allows you to have that humility to say, you know what, I'm I'm strong here. I'm gonna I'm gonna lead this area. You know what, I'm a little weak, but but you're strong. I'm going to, I'm going to step back and let you take this area. I mean, I think that, that kind of dynamics, if you're, if you're humble enough and you're caring enough about one another and, and you start thinking about people other than yourself, 
So, I mean, really, I think the, the issues that, that we may be having is just guys are, are really selfish right now and thinking about themselves. And, and I, I'm seeing a huge improvement in, in a lot of my guys. And that was really the genesis of this show was I had guys asking me, I want more leadership. I want, I want more character development. I want, to, I want to become a better leader, but I don't know how. You know, and I've, I've given guys, you know, a lot of opportunities to do that. We've sent guys to, you know, different military bases with the Marines and with the, the armies to take some leadership classes. Uh, I, I told you about me leading the guys all the way up the top of Pikes Peak and, you know, summiting a 14 footer and 14,000 uh, footer. I'm sorry, 14 foot, 14 foot wouldn't be a very high mountain, wouldn't it? But, you know, it, it's, it's nothing compared to Killa Jamari. I know that, but for me, with my broken up knees and, and arthritis uh, to make it up there and to lead these guys. And even in that, that small group I had, I mean, when we'd get tired, like one guy would be like, hey, we got to get going, you know. And next thing you know, I see these guys laying down. I'd be like, we got to keep moving, guys. We got we to gotta fuel. We got to eat. And we got to go, you know what I mean? Hydrate and, and eat some food and let's, let's keep it moving. We're not going to make it up there. But that role changed throughout that, that time. And, for me, that was a really cool dynamic to see my athletes saying, "Coach, we got to keep moving." And uh, I, I followed, I followed them for a while up the mountain. And then when they got tired, I had to say, "You know what? I'm going to pass you. Follow me." I mean, there was times straight up where I was having bad days. I was overworked, or I was, I was just maybe off my game, and I had to go to you guys and be like, "Look." I'm going to need help on this. Can you guys help me with this or this? And there, that's part of the team, right? We carry each other. And I think there's an old saying that says, if you want to go fast, go, go alone. alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Mm-hmm. And anytime you want to do a real serious, anything that's going to take a team, you know, if guys want leadership development. If they want a chance to do that, I would say, you know, paradoxically, instead of trying to sometimes even take the baton and, and lead forward, sometimes there is that outward forward leadership that's necessary. But one thing I really learned from this in these small close quarter team environments is you really want to develop your leadership. Start thinking about somebody else. Yeah. Be the guy who's thinking, what, what does Reinhold need tomorrow that I can set up tonight? What is What does he like to eat for breakfast? There was a time Shelly put our food out and she organized what our food packages. We eat these little space station uh, food packages that they eat on the international space yeah. station, little we would set out each other's food packages ahead of time. Or if, if, you know, if Reinhold knew that I was struggling with something, you know, he might go and, and pre-make the food. That way I don't have to go and use that time to make that either. Um, there, think, it, you, you know, you want to develop leadership in yourself or something, start putting somebody else ahead. Use that service leadership model and think ahead, but not for yourself. Think ahead. What is this person going to need? What's the team going to need on the next operation, the next cycle? You know, is this, it, you know, is this guy behind because he's in the training room? Can I pull his pull his wrestling shoes and his singlet together? Can I get his bag together? Um, you know, what does he need to make weight? Like, what else can I do for this next guy? You know, you do that, they're going to start seeing that you care about them. And that might be, you know, off the mat at home. Does he, you know, is this guy, you know, does he need a lift tomorrow because his car is yeah. in the shop? They're going to you build that camaraderie and now they can trust you. Well, they also know that you take that leadership role, but not, you know, with a microphone and a baton. But they see that you're leading and caring for them. I don't know. I think that really. I, I mean, I can think of so many examples of you know. I mean, guys that were that that weren't even on teams. I, I had friends of mine that were were not on teams. We've talked about this story. You know, when I had to cut nine and a half kilos in in an afternoon, and, and you know, wrestle for my spot on the Olympic team. You know, I I had two guys that that were both trying to get on that team, and and should have been on that team great athletes can credible competitors and they didn't make it and and here i am not on the team but got one more chance to put myself on that team and those two guys were going to help me make sure i made weight uh even if they were willing to kill me <laughs> like hey we got to stop the other guy would be like no no we could do it then, then they'd switch roles no we're gonna kill him no 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 <laughs> good cop bad cop <laughs> they kept they kept switching roles though but it was but that meant a lot to me. And, and then after, after I made weight, again, got me food, got me a doctor that, that got me an IV. You know I mean? It was like all, everything was taken care of. Cause I was just like, ah, I'm just laying there on the, on the couch. 
you know, losing all that weight and, and then, and then, you know, showed up to corner me and, and warm me up. And I mean, and those same, those same people went with me to, to, you know, Australia to help me prepare. And I mean, there's example after example of things that my friends and my teammates did for me that were just servant leadership. And, and I, I really appreciate this talk because it has nothing to do with what, what we were even going to discuss. But when we started talking about le- teamwork and leadership and you guys took the ball and, and really got it rolling for me tonight and um, got us thinking, I'm going to take a lot of, uh, a lot of notes, put some notes on the YouTube channel and this show is going to continue to get better when I figure out how to edit things and I can put something along the bottom of the screen and some graphics. But right now, I mean, just the conversation and uh, the insight from a couple guys that have been on a, on a NASA mission together and uh, been in a really cool environment and done a lot of incredible stuff. I mean, both of you guys, I mean, you guys got more degrees than Fahrenheit, you know, between you, but <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, brilliant guys. Uh, I, I I enjoy having great conversations with uh, smart guys, and I just want to thank you for giving us the time and giving the Greco team the time. And we're gonna keep doing this, Rick and Ryan. Hold, hopefully we get you back on here at another time as well. And if Rick's busy one weekend, I'll have to get your number so we can do one. Yeah, right. I tell you, this is the guy to talk to, man. He oh, makes man. discoveries about the moon surface. He's published scientific discoveries of the moon surface that he takes pictures with the satellites. Right. It's truly incredible man. stuff. And uh, he, he's full of it, man. I'm, I'm a nobody, but I, you know, I really appreciate being on this, you know, just being the presence of, of this guy and, and you, Matt, I mean, that's, that's like a life changing thing for me personally. So I, I mean, I'm more than happy to be All right. contributing. Well, well I'm going to, I'm going to hit you back up when, if I got a week that Rick's out of town and he's, he's flying oh, a, he, if he's flying well, some uh, one of those, uh, what, what are those? What were those planes that you went out in? The, the, oh goodness, the fast one, the really. Yeah, the fours are the, the cool. Ones. Yeah, thirty fours are pretty good, and yeah. we did all sorts of stuff. But I just want to say, Matt. I mean, a, a lot of at least certainly what helped me to get integrated with the mission is I've learned a lot from you guys, uh, your coaching staff, your athletes. You know, I think a lot of times the athletes forget that they're. They serve as a big inspiration for a lot of people. You know, I was a, a Division three walk-on nobody in sports, but I watched the athletes. All your guys are still an inspiration to so many people off the mat that well, look to them and, I, I, and see them. I think that's important that they that they hear that and they know that because no matter where they're at, on the mat or off the mat, people are watching them and, and seeing what kind of people they are, what kind of character they have. And – uh they're they're going to look to that, and and that's either going to say, oh, I don't want to be a part of Greco Roman, or man, I need to be a part of that because those guys care about one another. They 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 show it with the way they act, and they're loving. They care for one another. They're great leaders. They're great teamwork, team players. Um, or or they're going to look at it and see somebody that's not doing the right thing and go, man, I don't know if I want to be a part of that. And I, I think that's really important that you emphasize that point that i mean there's tons of people that are watching my athletes and and seeing how they behave and what kind of people they are yeah you'll never know the type of person that you're going to influence when you have that platform that your athletes have you know i'm a i'm a scientist and a nerd i sit and i I work on a desk or i fly a plane right but i do something non-wrestling most of the time but there's so many ways that people like me and, and all sorts of other walks of life are inspired by the stories of the athletes by their by their failures and their successes and their their resilience and overcoming the resilience, that stuff. The 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 R in character. I mean, we see we hit these. They they just keep coming up and and up again. And we're gonna continue to to bring these up on the show and dig into Jack's book a little more. I mean, we got. I mean, there's so many.